Hey guys, Dilby here. Welcome back to the channel. So you asked for it, and today we're gonna do it. It's solid grooves time. Porsa, Michael Beebe, Eddie M, Dennis Cruz, all those guys. We're doing it, we're doing it. Porsa and Michael Beebe's label, Solid Grooves, has really taken the world by storm. These guys have grown themselves to be some of the biggest artists in the scene. They play the biggest shows on the planet, they top the Beatport charts, and they have hordes of screaming fans. So the sound that these guys have cultivated takes influences from minimal and tech house. It's got the kind of aggressive drums of tech house and the skippy minimal beats from minimal techno. The thing that tends to make these tracks also so accessible is that they utilize a lot of samples, often quite obvious, sometimes quite clever. With this clever combination of techy minimal beats and overground samples, they're able to appeal to a pretty broad audience while also satisfy the underground heads. It's a pretty clever strategy actually, and it seems to have paid off. As always, you can download the project files from this video. There's a link in the description which goes to my Patreon. There you can get the project files for this video and all my other videos. It's one of the best ways that you can support the channel and make sure that I keep bringing you these vids on a weekly basis. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get into Ableton. All right guys, so here we are inside Ableton and this is the project I've put together for some solid grooves, minimal tech house. Porsa, Michael Beebe, Eddie M, that kind of thing. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the concept. Now this is something I don't really hear other people on YouTube talk about. And what I mean by the concept is basically having an idea of what you're gonna do before you sit down to do it. In my experience, there's nothing more overwhelming than sitting down to a blank DAW screen and going, all right, do something great, come up with an amazing idea. What I try to do is come up with an idea, come up with a plan, a concept beforehand. And that's what I did in this track. As I said in the intro, a lot of these tracks utilize pretty famous vocal samples or flipping like a melody of a track. So the idea I came up with was to do a take on Queen's Another One Bites the Dust. So let's have a listen through and then we'll get into how I made it. All right, there you go. Another one bites the dust. So let's just jump in like we always do with the drums, starting off with the kick. And what I've done here is basically taken a kick sample from a kick loop. So it's like a pretty aggressive analog sounding kick. All I've done here with this EQ is add up a bit of highs and take out a little bit of muddiness that was happening around 200 without the highs. So that's just to help it cut through. Really simple stuff. With these kind of tracks, you wanna use pretty short kicks most of the time. We're at 130 BPM, so the pace is pretty high. If you use a long kick, you're gonna end up the, with the tail of those kicks running into each other, and there's gonna, not gonna leave a lot of space for the bass line, which is a very important aspect of the track. In the kick MIDI, I've created a 4-4 pattern over four bars, and then just added in a couple of double hits. For this one, I've just pulled the MIDI back so that they don't overlap, and just brought the velocity of the second one down. Then on the fourth bar, I've just added in one extra swingy little short kick, just to give it a little bit of extra flavor. So that's kind of working like a bass line before we even add the bass line. Got no top kick, so I'm just gonna delete that channel. Now let's look at the claps and snares. I'll just turn the snare off first, and we've got two claps. So one's kind of like a hand clap, and one's a bit more of a kind of chunky, almost snare sound. So they're gonna kind of complement each other. They're not sitting in the same space in the frequency spectrum, and they're slightly panned left and right. So that's just gonna give us a bit of a wider feel. 
I've got a little bit of reverb and I've really pulled the decay time down and pulled the dry wet back from where I would normally put it because we don't want it to be too splashy. In terms of the samples for both of them what I've done is put it in one shot mode, pulled the length right in and then used the fade out to just make it nice and snappy. Same thing here, we just don't want a lot of decay. All of the drum sounds in these kind of tracks are going to be really tight and skippy. Now I've got the snare, it's a 909 snare sound, very classic stuff. I've just tuned that up one semitone so that's in the key of the track. Always try and tune your snares and your other percussion sounds if you can. To do that I just use the spectrum in notes mode and look at where the fundamental is hitting. So we've got a pretty simple pattern with the snares, going over four bars again. So it's a very classic sound and it's giving quite an aggressive vibe to it. Most of the elements have got quite heavy swing applied and these are straight and I feel like having that straight snare sound with such an aggressive attacky kind of punchy percussive sound helps to really make it cut through and come across a lot more aggressive by having it straight on the sixteenths. What I'm doing is cutting out a little bit of the low end to leave some space for the kick in the bass. Now let's look at the hats. Okay, so first up I've got an open hat and we're just utilizing the 909 again. On the envelope here, but the sustain way down, I've got a short decay and a short release. It's because we're trying to, it's an open hat, but we're trying to make it really snappy and tight. Then I've just got a couple of little ghost hits in here. And this is helping add to the skippy vibe and help add a bit of groove to the hats. You can hear those ghost notes, they're really subtle but they really just help to add a lot of groove and energy to the track. Now I've got this 16th hat which is kind of like a dirt kind of noise type thing. Very kind of clicky and glitchy. I'll just play the original sample. So it's already pretty glitchy. Now I'm cutting out some of the lows, a little bit of the highs, and then I've got an auto pan which is just panning it across the panorama. So it's really kind of just adding a bit of interest in the highs. It's not doing too much. It's very low in the mix as well. So it's subtle, but having it on those sixteenths really just helps to add some skip to the track. Then I've got my LFO tool which is just ducking it. Also helps to add a bit of groove as the first two hits in the bar are going to be a bit lower in volume. Now this is where a lot of the kind of groove and character of the drums is coming from. So what I've done is found a drum break. So this is kind of like a classic funk type sample from a pack I found on Splice. I'll just take off the processing here. We can hear what the original thing sounds like. You can see here I've got the transient envelope pulled all the way down to 23 which means it's really really tight. This is what it originally sounds like. So this is like a remake of I think it's the Funky Drummer break which is a very very classic break and this is just like a reinterpretation of it. It's not exactly the same but it has the same vibe for sure. This is also at 110 BPM so we're playing it a lot faster than what, it, than what it's originally recorded at. So now if we have a listen again with the tight envelope, very cool, adding a lot of character to the track. Now I noticed Porsa using drum breaks in some recent tracks and actually quite a few of the recent tracks on Solid Grooves were utilizing drum breaks in the background somehow. Next up I've got a shaker and for this one I've also pulled in the envelope on the transients. Just helping keep it nice and tight. And remember we're, we're going at 130 BPM. So all of those sustains are going to kind of run into each other. So we want to keep everything nice and tight. So we're getting this really nice skippy interesting feel in the drums. Now on this drum break what I've actually done is add an LFO tool to duck the clap or the snare because we don't want it. We've already got these claps. So they there adding a bit of texture but the LFO tool is pulling the volume down of the, of the clap, the snare. 
and that's using a preset that I've made called Dilby's Clap Ducker. So I'm just using that envelope shape. I've got it at 63%. And then I'm using this Tantra. That's adding this kind of glitchy atmosphere. If you're gonna make modern minimal music, I recommend getting Tantra or Deep Blue Glitch as a free version, or Sigmund from D16 as another one, Audio Damage Replicant, you know, something like this that kind of adds some randomization, some glitchiness, and really kind of helps to give the character that you're gonna be after. On this one, I've got it at only 43%. because we really want that drum break to be coming through. So it's just adding this kind of glitchy, bubbly stuff in the background. So keeping it kind of subtle, but really adding some nice flavor. All right, now let's jump onto the bass. So first up in the bass, let's actually talk about this fingered bass. So this is playing the riff, the iconic riff from Another One Bites the Dust. That's gonna be the kind of wow moment. When that comes in, the crowd's just gonna go absolutely ballistic. You'd hope so. So what I've got here, I just found a one shot. I was trying to do this with some Ableton devices, but I actually found the tone was really hard to get right, that I got the best results by just searching on Loop Cloud for a bass one shot that was in the root note of the track and then using that. There's a little bit of velocity here, which is just helping kind of emphasize some of the notes, these ones in particular. In terms of processing, I've got just a little bit of bass roundup coming from the Ableton amp device. And then a little bit of glue compressor just to control the dynamics, an LFO tool and a bit of chorus to add some width. Now there's something going on with this EQ, which I'm gonna explain in a minute. Let's just have a look what's happening. Interesting, we'll get back to that. I'm also sending this to a little bit of reverb and a little bit of saturation. Those are just from my standard template. I'll link a video up here where you can check out my walkthrough of the template. Okay, so we've got this sub. What I've done here, taken this fingered bass MIDI, copied it, shortened the notes and added some extra notes. Very similar, very subby. Now, before I get into the sound design, let's look at this envelope follower. What that's doing is it's capturing the envelope of the sound coming out of this operator. Let's have a look. And I've mapped this to the fingered bass band three, which is a low shelf. I've mapped it to the gain here. So based on that envelope, it's pushing this band three, this low shelf down so that we're not getting overlapping sub. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to have some sub here when it plays in the break. But when they're playing together, I don't want to have doubled up sub because it's only going to cause trouble. To get this to work, I increase the gain a bit so that it's accentuating the envelope. And then I've set this here, which is the lowest point and the highest point. So the highest point is 50%. That's where it's going to start from. And then it's going to go down to 0%. If I had this at 100%, that would be turning this gain knob all the way up. So it's going from 50% here down to 0%. And that's working like a kind of track spacer alternative sidechaining a specific frequency. Now the sound design in this, I've got operator here, just with one sine wave being FM'd by another sine wave, which is half a semitone above, hear that. Sorry, half a semitone below. So you can, so you can see it adding in a lower fundamental. Now I've also got this pitch envelope, which is starting at seven semitones above and super fast decay, just adding a little bit of pitch attack kind of sound. So this is the same way that you would make a kick drum or a tom drum sound, but not quite as aggressive. The point of this is just because it's so subby to give it like a little bit of an aggressive attack. Then I'm using a filter with some resonance and some drive just to add a bit more attack as well. 
So this sub is going to work really well for the low end, but it doesn't quite have the aggressive attack that a lot of these solid grooves tracks have. So what I've used is an 808 Tom. I've tuned it down to C, then I'm playing the same MIDI as the sub. I've got a very short filter frequency envelope here. Let's hear it. Sounds a bit shit, really. I'm adding this overdrive on it and then cutting out the lows. But let's hear the sub. A lot more aggressive, cuts through a lot better. So if we hear that together with the kick. So I've used this overdrive to really kind of push it and make it cut through. It's quite distorted and that's just making it more audible. This is really just a top end for the bass. Last thing in the bass group is this bass fill. Basically what I've done is taken the last notes of this MIDI, added an extra note above, and then turned them into 30 second notes, very short. So it's basically playing a familiar riff, but very, very short staccato. I wasn't quite cutting through enough. It didn't give have the tone that I wanted. So I changed the bass synth from mono to poly and just duplicated the notes up an octave. So let's have a listen and compare it to the fingered bass. So it's going doo -doo -doo, but it's going on its own. It sounds a bit whack really, but in the context, it's pretty cool. I'm just using a preset from Wavetable called Jupiter Plus Bass. And as I said, I just changed it to poly. Uh, then I've got a bunch of aggressive saturation and some chorus. Just also take off this auto pan. So without the processing, with the overdrive, with the erosion, the pedal and chorus and the auto pan which makes it kind of whip from left to right. So the reason the auto pan works is kind of because of where it is in the arrangement. Everything stops, there's a kind of moment of silence and then it whips across the panorama playing this very bright audible sound. So in general, there's not a lot of effect sounds in these kind of tracks. So this is an effect sound, essentially. It's made from a bass sound, and I used the bass MIDI, which is kind of why it's in the bass group. I could have just as easily put it in the effects group, to be honest. Okay, let's have a look at the melody group. First thing we've got here is this acid pluck synth. I just made a simple riff using the same notes from the bass line. And this is quite low in the mix. You can probably hear I've got a Tantra in there as well. So without the Tantra, a bit more of a acid sound. Would also work in the track, I'd say. The Tantra just gives it a bit more character. Again, I've got this at only half 50% dry wet. Overdrive. Just kind of pumping up the sound, giving it a bit more saturation. This is a really simple saw wave that I've made in Wavetable. And what I've done here, basically pulled the filter right down, resonance way up, bunch of drive on the Korg MS-20 setting, short plucky amplification envelope, short plucky filter envelope. Then in the matrix, I'm using envelope two to influence the filter frequency. And all this resonance is basically what gives it that acid sound. I've then added a bit of unison just to kind of spread it out a bit and give it a bit more character. Really simple sound. And the whole acid thing is based on the TB303, which is a really super simple single oscillator monosynth. So it's gonna be really simple. Now I've got this reversed piano sound. So in the original Queen song, there's actually a reversed piano sound with some phasey kind of effects on it, which is quite iconic. I couldn't quite recreate that. I think it just depends on having the right piano sound. But what I did is I took my house piano rack, I put the root note in the perfect fifth to play a chord. I also put some reverb on that to extend it out a bit longer. I froze it and then I can just drag it like this. Yep. Then I have hit the reverse and that's what we have here. To get it to this shape, all I've done is pull the 
envelope in like this and pump the volume up a bit. There we go. And then I've got a bit of overdrive, adding some harmonics and this phaser, which is just kind of giving it this washy wah wah sound. Just helps it feel a bit more spacey. If I was actually making this track to release, I'd probably sample the original sound or try a bunch of different pianos till I got something that was a bit closer. But it does use the same effect and it's kind of, and it's a nod to the original. Now we've got some vocals. This is just a breath, which is cut out of the a cappella. Let's have a look at the envelope here. So all that's turned off. It's just playing this breath sound. What I might do is consolidate that, loop it, boom. Now here we've got a couple of one-shot vocals at, from the ad-libs of the original track. Very cool. And I've just added a bunch of saturation onto that, some chorus and a big echo with some reverb as well. And it just really helps to kind of make it feel a bit spacey. It's in the break. I want it to feel a bit epic, right? I wasn't sure whether or not to add the vocals. Sometimes these guys will make a track that kind of utilizes the riff or something, but doesn't actually use the vocal. Uh, like, I forget the name, but the track that Porsa did, which has a piano playing the riff from Eiffel 65 Blue. In this case, I thought having the vocal really added something, but I haven't used the another one bites the dust part. So it still creates this anticipation and this tension. Hey, I'm gonna get you to. So it's like the kind of pre-chorus sentence before he says another one bites the dust, but then it never actually happens. This one too, I'll just consolidate it. Hey, I'm gonna get you to. Really cool. In terms of the arrangement, basically what I've done is just built up the drums and things and then dropped into this pretty short break. And the point of the break is to create a moment and introduce the theme of the song. So it drops out, we take out the kick and the bass. I kept the drum loop, the drum break going and the claps. Vocals just add a kind of like spacey effect and then we're going to drop into the theme of the track. You can see how powerful that is to introduce this bass and then cut away to only the bass. Just thinking this vocal here, this all right, or what did he say? Right. Yeah, that could possibly come a bit later. I just don't want it to bleed over too much and take away the impact of this bass playing by itself. Yeah, I think that works better actually. So as always, the project files are available to download from my Patreon. There's a link in the description of this video. You can go in, have a look at all this stuff, see how I've made it, use the presets in your track, figure out how I've done the sound design, that kind of thing in a bit more detail. You'll also find the project files from all of my other videos. So it's a really great resource. I suggest you go over and check it out. All right, guys, there you go. Let me know in the comments, what did you think? How did I do on the sound? If you're looking for more tutorials on this kind of minimal deep tech sound, then check out this one I did, which is on late replies, dimish, that kind of thing. You're gonna like it. Anyway, that's it from me today. We'll catch you next time. Peace.